a good week for us to, to get uh, covered mentally, physically. I, I, I heard the word kinetic energy. I ain't heard that since grade school. Though. It ain't about what they do. You know that energy can't be created. It's about what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Energy is always there. It's all about their going out there, making plays. Like I could just remember in the Atlanta game when Chris Miller made a big play on special teams. You know, we came out there on defense, kind of turned up. You know, it, it can't be created. It can only be transferred. So I think it's all about just being able to transfer energy throughout the game. Rested and refreshed and ready for the Mike Vrabel Show. With the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. Glad to have you with us. Coming off the bye, which finds the Titans one game out of first place in the AFC South. Mike Vrabel, everything is there for the taking if you take care of business down the stretch. Sure, got to take uh, advantage of the opportunities uh, one week at a time. You, know, you saw a little bit of a, a physics lesson there with the, with the energy. You know, I know a lot had been made of the energy, so I did a little research and, and went back to, uh, to the old physics back at uh, Ohio State. And uh, apparently Kevin was listening, which I know he always does and I appreciate. And so it doesn't fall upon deaf ears that, that Kevin was able to, to explain that as well. If the Titans are going to make a run down the stretch, they need to do some of the things they did best in the season's first 10 games. So in Vrabel's six-pack tonight, we look at some of those things that the Titans want to do well down the stretch. And we'll start with number 22 himself. That's Derrick Henry. Titans want to get him loose a lot the rest of the way. Well, it takes all 11, and uh, we've, we've gotten him uh, to some good 10- and 12-yard gains. You, know, you have to be able to block the edges. Receiver's doing a great job on, on this play, but um, running the ball better at this point in time uh, than we had last year, uh, believe it or not. And I know that we all believe that there's a lot more left in there. Uh, I think everybody understands that. And, uh, you know, we're getting close. It was good to see us, you know, hit a big one there. We'd had a couple other big ones called back um, for penalties and technique issues. So, you know, we have to clean that stuff up and, and continue to do that and use that to our advantage and, uh, you know, let it, let it complement our offense. Turning to defense, let's talk about more takeaways for the Titans. This team right now plus five in turnover ratio. Yeah, we've done a good job. I think we can do a much better job of, of just not having those MOBPs, like catch the ones they throw you. I feel like we're looking for those opportunities to hammer the ball out. We can always, you know, try to affect the quarterback. If we can't get there, being able to get our hand up, affect it, tip it, usually tip balls in this league, get intercepted. Uh, we saw that with, with Harold Landry in the Carolina game. But if we can just catch the ones that are thrown to us, um, you know, we can really give our offense, a, you know, a short field, and, and that's another way to, to transfer that momentum and that energy. When you get inside the other team's 20, score touchdowns. That has been something that we've had a lot of confidence in lately. Um, you know, it, it's always a combination of the scheme and uh, execution. Uh, sometimes in this case, it's just players making plays. You know, Ryan throws a great ball. Tajay runs a great route, you know, catches it. He's able to you know, show his hands late. You know, and then there's some other times where we've been able to dial up some, some plays that I thought were you know, very, very good plays and good, well-called plays and designed plays. So uh, there's a good balance there. Make big plays in special teams like at the end of the game against Kansas City and at the end of the Atlanta game. Well, we have to be able to always protect our kickers. Um, we feel like we have one of the best, if not the best, punter in the league. Um, you know, it's okay to reserve the right to punt. Uh, as you can see here, we're great on the goal line. This is something that we practice a lot, and they understand the rules. They try to bleed it out here. But being able to do that, we, we got to get this kickoff return unit going. Uh, that was such a weapon for us last year. We've, we've hit a couple. But uh, when it starts to get colder now, those, those kicks aren't going to travel as far, and uh, we have an opportunity to return them, and we have to be able to get on guys and, and not have the penalties that we had against Kansas City. Make it hard on opposing offenses. Well, get back to playing great defense, and uh, not, that, not that we haven't. It's just been inconsistent. We've had a couple guys out, and I think we've played some actually really talented offenses. I think that when you talk about you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, these are teams that uh, have talented, talented skill players. And um, you know, we have to make sure that we're, we're getting off the field on third down and we're great in the red zone. 
when you get to November and December, you're playing a lot of division games. You just have to find a way. Well, Bottom line. That's that's really what we're about. Right? We feel like the grittier it is and the grimier it is, you know, the better it is for us. And uh, I think that's just the, the type of people that we are. Um, I, I think we've done a good job of uh, executing in critical situations, understanding what the situation is, somebody coming up, making a play. Uh, you saw that uh, in, in a few wins that we've had um, this season. That could have been our Bridgestone clutch performance play of the first 10 games, but we think we've got an even better sequence, and that's up next on The Mike Brable Show. Bridgestone clutch performance play of the first 10 games. We should call it the sequence. From the Chargers game, first and goal at the one. They're going to run it. Gordon does not get in after initially being ruled in on first down. Just an unbelievable sequence of plays here. I think when you get down here, it's just got to be penetration. You see Jeff, you know, and everybody else scratching, clawing, fighting. And then on the second down play, you know, guy comes in, puts his hand on the ball, hammers it out of there. Uh, we have clear recovery. I mean, there's a lot going on at this point in time. You know, they, they, the clock was running, they stop it. You know, but our guys were, were locked in. You know, you have to have clear recovery right there. Jarrell did, um, was ruled a touchback. He was touched down in the end zone. But just the fight that you have to have to, to win some of these games in those situations. But you look at those two plays. On the first one, Simmons and Evans combined to make the tackle. On the second one, you get great penetration initially by Evans. Woodyard causes the fumble. Casey recovers the fumble. Jones was in there. There were several guys making things happen to keep them from getting in from three feet away. And that's what you have to have to to have a great team or a great defense. You have to have 11 guys that are complementing each other, that are um, selling out for each other. And uh, you understand that it's not always going to be pretty, but... uh, you know, the guys are fighting and scratching and clawing for each other, and that, that's what made it so, uh, so fun to be a part of. That's who you are. I, I think at the end of the day, uh, that, that's who we are. I think the guys understand that. You know, we have to play to that mentality and that type of, um, you know, just grit that I think is so critical in this league. Are you ready for Delta Dental Guess the Titan? Worst part of my week. Worst part of your week? You're five out of I, nine I, I on get so season. nervous. Thanks to our friends at Delta Dental. I'm going to take a look and see... Oh, wait a minute. Two pack? It's two, yeah. It's two people. It looks like two thirds of the three stooges, for God's sakes. Huh. One looks familiar. We need to get a break. It's a two pack. Delta Dental guess the Titan. Mike Vrabel, five of nine on the season. So can he get one or both of these as we move forward on the year? Coming off the bye, looks like uh, one on the left has no neck. I, I'm at a loss. I, that my, my, I'm focused on the Jacksonville Jaguars. I can't even figure this you out. You don't I, know who either of those are? I don't. All right. I guess we show them. Mike Vrabel and Mike Keith. Yep. Good God, Mike. <laughs> it was a handsome young fella. I don't know what happened. I mean either. <laughs> I tell, that's pitiful. Pitiful. I mean, I'm surprised they didn't leave us at the hospital <laughs> talking about those pictures. Well, they tried, I think. I, here's somebody who was born in the 1990s, Derek Henry. He's going to be our Geico gladiator of the game. Derrick Henry, 999 total yards so far this season and 10 touchdowns. Just got to keep going. He continues to improve. Um, He's got a very unique skill set, size, speed. He's got length. You know, he's really trying to focus on on his ability to to use his stiff arm, um, catching the ball. And so those are things that we have to continue to um, be a part of our offense, and, and I think this is really where you know we're going to need him to come along here and we start playing meaningful games in November and December. Special guy, 
Undoubtedly, Derrick Henry, 2015 Heisman Trophy winner, all-time leading rusher in American high school football, and the tailback for your Tennessee Titans. Derek, I've got to ask you a question that only a running back could answer. When you take a handoff and you start working towards a hole, whether it be on the right side or the left side, do you know what you're going to do as you get ready for contact or get ready to make a move, or is that more reaction? Yeah, I just think you just react to what the defense gives you and then you know, reaction off your blocks and you're making your reads and you know, you're trying to make a one cut you know, and get downhill you know, to get advantage on the defender. When you watch yourself on tape, do you even sometimes surprise yourself with things that you've done? Probably not really, because I always think I can do better, so, you know, I'm always uh, pushing myself, so I'd probably say probably not. Sticking with tape watching, when, when you're viewing it during the course of the week, either watching your game that you've just played or the upcoming opponent, what are the most important things to watch for a running back? You know, how you finish runs, how you were effective, you know, when you had the ball in your hands, being effective with the ball not in your hands, you know, your effort and your finish, you know, you know, because you know, those guys block receivers, tight ends, and, you know, you want to make sure that you're, you know, blocking for those guys when they have the ball, you know, just being an all-around team guy and, you know, basically just, you know, just being physical and having an attacking mentality, you know, because, you know, at a position we're going to get hit a lot, so you got to have that, you know, mindset to, you know, deliver blows. Titan fans go nuts when Derrick Henry goes into the Wildcat. And you are very good at running the Wildcat when they snap the ball directly to you. What's the real key to making a Wildcat play work and work well from your perspective as the guy who has the ball snapped directly to you? I think it's just the guys who looks naturally doing it. I mean, I've been doing it since high school. You know, been, been running here a couple of times. We had success with it. So I think it's just all of us being locked in, you know, because it's not a formation or things you see each, you know, and every week, you know, in the NFL. So if you run it, you got to have confidence in it to be efficient. I think we've done a pretty good job when we got a chance to do it. Do you like running Wildcat? Yeah, I mean, it gives me an opportunity to you know, get the ball in my hands, actually being at a quarterback position, you know, and um, getting out in space and, you know, making plays and having an efficient runs. So all credits to everybody on the offense is doing their job and, you know, making that thing go. Have you talked to him about letting you throw a little more? Not really. I just <laughs> go over what they want to put in is go out there and execute it. Cold weather is upon us. Do you like playing in cold weather? And the second part is, why do you think you're more effective in cold weather? It really don't matter to me. Football is football. If it's cold, rainy, or hot, I mean, you just got to go out there and play. You know, that's the nature of the game. You're going to have to play in those conditions. And I think it's just a mindset to go out there and play at a high level. I think it's just a, a different mentality, you know, when it gets to the cold weather, you know, because nobody like really wants to play in the cold, but you just have to be physical. Like I said, just a mindset thing. I think you just got to run more, run more physical, one court runs, and just get downhill. Play in the division. When you play Jacksonville, you know they're going to be tough games. What's the key to having success running the football against a physical defense like Jacksonville's? I think you just got to uh, stay with it, stay confident, and believe in you know the game plan that's been installed because they're a defense where it might be muddy at times, it might not be big runs, but I feel like as the game goes on, if you stick to, you know, your rules and what you do as an offense, I think that those four to five yard gains are turning into bigger games, you know, because they're fast, they're physical, got disruptive guys, so, you know, you just got to stay locked in, even when it don't seem like nothing's going well. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. The head coach had an idea last spring as he talked with linebacker Wesley Woodyard, he said, Wesley Woodyard needs to get some broadcasting reps. And so he got some, along with several of his teammates, as we put together a player takeover of our Titans All Access program. Take a look at our guys at work behind the scenes. I can't wait. You got the Lumberjack taking over the things. It's a bye week. The players are here. We're ready to run this thing, baby. Time enough. That's what the Jack does. So you're talking to Spencer's camera, and so your first line is, from me, Wesley Woodyard, we're not just on part of the show, we're taking over the show. We're not just on the show, we're a part of the show. Oh, here we go. We're not going to get into it. We're not going to get into it. Into, 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 into the college competition. Oh, he's grabbing his hand like that. Boy, you got my hair on top of your head. <laughs> 
see a lot of previous football players being able to get into this field. So, you know, it's, it's kind of something that you can continue to gel with the brotherhood. It's the Lumberjack, welcome back. <laughs> That's perfect! That's perfect! Of course. This is what the Jack does. Jack gets out here, shows up, shows out. It's definitely what I'm going to be doing after football. This is my 12th year in the league. Sometimes you got to find ways to wind down, get away from football. Better way to do it, play a little video games. Oh, get him! Yup. Where you at, KB? I'm on the left side. Oh, I got to reload. All right, fellas, let's end it like we always do. Let yes, me get sir. an easy work on three. One, two, three. Easy, easy work. work. You asking the champ how was that experience? I should ask you how was that experience? That experience was great for you, wasn't it? Yeah. You loved that experience. That experience was everything that you were hoping for. The Lumberjack loved it, baby. It's great. It's harder than playing linebacker, isn't it? Are you still here? <laughs> I thought I kicked him out a long time ago. Lumberjack out. That was a great experience for everybody involved. And you saw Wesley Woodyard, you saw Roger Saffold, you saw Kevin Byard, you saw the linebackers. They got to have some fun, but they realized that broadcasting boot camp and several of the things the NFL offers them is a great opportunity to prepare them for life after football. And you've had some friends that you played with who've done it and done it very well. Sure, it's a great transition for these guys. They're very knowledgeable. They put a lot of time in, in the game. And, um, you know, the, you've seen a lot of people, former players of mine, teammates of mine, you know, Willie McGinnis, Teddy Bruschi, Rodney Harrison, uh, Matt Chatham is even still involved in it and up in New England. And uh, they give such a great perspective and uh, they work hard at it. You know, these guys are used to hard work. And so uh, they understand that they may not be great at it to begin with, but they're going to work hard. And, you know, it was fun to watch those guys uh, do that and enjoy to do that. And I just felt like, um, that would be a great perspective for our fans to get to see them in that light. Yeah, it's always fun. The fans love to see the players, but truthfully, we want to thank them. They were very coachable in the process, and uh, everybody involved really enjoyed the player takeover. When we come back, it's time for the coach, keys to success. Jacksonville on deck, and we're back to talk about it next on the Mike Vrabel Show. Who was Skip Hicks? Do you remember Skip Hicks? He was a running back from UCLA who joined the Titans in 2001 during a season where Eddie George was battling a toe injury yet still trying to play. On December 16, 2001, the Titans were hosting the playoff bound Green Bay Packers at Nissan Stadium. Brett Favre was at his apex as the Packers quarterback and the Titans were just like Eddie George, really beaten up but still trying to show the heart of a champion that they had displayed in the two preceding seasons. On this day, it would not be George or Favre or any other big name who would make headlines. It would be Skip Hicks, 17 rushes for 142 yards, a 51-yard run, and a 22-yard touchdown run that put the game away with 10.42 remaining as Tennessee would upset Green Bay 26-20. Footnote on Skip Hicks, he would carry 16 times in another upset win at Oakland six days later, but then amazingly would never carry the football in an NFL regular season game again. Time for Mike Vrabel's keys to success. The opponent, Jacksonville. And you got to start with their pressure up front. You got to slow down their blitzes. Yeah, not only are they talented on defense, but they also uh, love to bring pressure. And that's something that, uh, you know, there were times where we handled it, but uh, we have to make them pay if they're going to pressure us. Um, and, that, and that's a that's a huge key for us offensively is be able to identify it and uh, and and be able to to attack it. Second key is about Leonard Fournette. You have to stop him running and catching the football. You know, one of those guys that uh, they, has become a focal point of their offense, and I know that they've always thought about making him, and this team is built to play with the lead. They can give him the ball, they can throw it to him, uh, screen it with him, uh, flare it to him, and uh, it, this will be a huge challenge for us. I, I felt like we, we did handle it okay. We, we gave up the one at the end, which is unfortunate, but you know we, we, we were very aware of, of him, and they're just gonna continue to try to create ways to get him the football. Mike Vrabel's final key to success, win on third down on both sides of the football. Well, through the first 10 weeks, we spent too many uh, 
downs or third downs and, and third and seven plus uh, 66 times. And that's, that's too many to, to be able to convert um, on a regular basis. And so we have to start by not putting ourselves in third and long. And defensively, um, you know, we got to get back to, to getting off the field on third down. That when it gets to be third down and money down, we, we got to get back off. The, we we got to get back to where we were earlier in the season. Titans in Jacksonville coming up at Nissan Stadium on Sunday. Remember, kickoff is set for 3.05. We're on the air with Titans Radio at 2 o'clock Central Time. And tickets are still available. Want to see as many of you out there as possible for the Titans and the Jags? Go to titansonline.com slash tickets. For Mike Vrabel, Mike Keith says thanks for being with us on the Mike Vrabel Show.